going to be doing the engine break in the cam break in on this engine here really soon and getting some things ready to do that i want to uh when i break the cam in i don't want to monkey around with trying to figure out the timing figure out dwell and i just want it to fire up and run and go right to 2000 maybe a little over 2000 rpms to break the cam in so uh to be sure i get that right I set the timing uh, and, and the dwell before I ever even started up. Uh, I'll show you how I do that. The dwell, I hook the, I just hook the distributor up to the coil, uh, just like it would be in the engine running. And I just use a battery hooked here, hook my dwell meter up. And I've already adjusted this one to 30 degrees. Uh, now I'm running a full 12 volts to the coil on this. In the car, I think the car has seven volts. So whenever I fire it up in the car, I'll have to readjust the dwell. Uh, I, I think, I'm, on, I'm almost sure that the voltage going to the coil will affect the dwell. But uh, I've already adjusted this one, but let's see if I can do this holding the camera. Uh, don't know if I can do this. I may have to. Basically, you're just spinning the shaft with voltage hooked up to it. Let me grab this. And I'll get up here on the battery. See if I can set this to where. Okay. And then the dwell, which Yeah, that was pretty crude, but uh, not holding a camera, it's a whole lot better. Let me get that unhooked. Uh, and then I'll show you how I time it. Oh, I get the ignition timing really, really close without even firing it up. I'll show you that next. Uh, I'll get the distributor in it and we'll go from there. Before I put the distributor in, then uh, I also prime the oil pump. I've already done this engine, but uh, I'll show you what I do. I've got a, I've got a chisel. And then just put it in a uh, what is this half inch? Yeah, a half inch socket, and then in a drill, and then the oil pump. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see in there, but the chisel fits right in the oil pump. You want to get it centered or it shakes really bad. And then you just turn it clockwise. <coughs> yep, I don't have it centered. <coughs> there you go. I don't have it centered still. Try this again. Sorry for all jerky in the camera. <laughs> and when I do that, I will prime it until I have oil coming out every rocker. Um, sometimes I will, uh, I won't get it out of every rocker, so I'll turn the engine about a half a turn, do it again, uh, turn the engine another half turn, I'll do that four times till I've 
come all the way back to number one top dead center on compression stroke uh, but yeah once once you got oil coming out every rocker at the top with valve covers off then then you're pretty much good by then but i did that oh i think last weekend and uh and then i done it in the middle of the week one more time and then doing it now just so i can show you how how i do it uh and now i'll put the distributor in and i'll show you how i time it okay i've got the distributor in and to time this with the uh, engine not running the ignition timing itself the book says the jet fire engine should be 10 degrees before top dead center so you got to be sure you're on the compression stroke uh don't pay attention to my harmonic balance or pulley this is just temporary till my till the original one comes back i'm getting it rebuilt with new rubber in it but uh the timing mark needs to be set on 10 degrees for a uh, 10 degree initial ignition timing then uh you gotta hook your ignition up with a negative wire of a positive wire and the negative wire on the other side just hook anywhere to the ground and then the other positive will go to the positive of the coil and then with that on 10 degrees and the distributor loose and that's pointed pretty close to where number one should be you just turn this back and forth and when you turn it back and forth when you get the spark that should be right at 10 degrees so your initial timing will be set when you fire the engine up it should be close enough to run it may not be perfect it may be off two three degrees but but it's going to run and uh, then when you go to your cam break in then just to back and forth a little bit less and less and less until you get that snap and stop and that's where you lock it down so uh, the timing should be real close I'll, uh, I'll tighten the bolt uh, hopefully that don't turn on me but uh, like I say it's not gonna be exactly perfect 10 degrees but it's gonna be really close and the engine will will at least fire up and run so that you're not monkeying around uh, trying to get timing trying to get dwell trying to get lifters pumped up uh, this way when I go to start it then I'll, I'll put gas down in the vent of the carburetor I'll have to take this plate off I'll pour gas down in the vent that way gas is right there I don't have to keep cranking um, I'll probably bottle feed this gravity feed it down to the pump it's a it's an NOS pump and I did test it on another car so it does work but uh, I'll probably still go ahead and gravity feed it to the fuel pump um, but other than that then uh, the next step will be put the plug wires on it um, I'll hook the radiator up temporarily have to come up some way to hold the radi radiator and I'll get a uh, I got a carpet dryer fan at work I'm gonna bring home so I can blow through the radiator with it it moves a lot of air uh, breaking it in I'm sure it's gonna want to get plenty hot so uh, keep as much fresh air to it as I can I'm probably using just straight water I'm not gonna use antifreeze to break it in because I'm gonna break it in right here on the front suspension I'm not even gonna put it in the car I'm gonna do it just like this but uh, but anyway I'll come back when I'm ready fired up I think I'm ready to fire it up now we got water and radiator I took this top cover off put gas down the air vent filled the float bowl full 
Uh, got my battery hooked up, starters hooked up. Put water in the radiator. I forgot to plug this hole and, and that one, so I just looped a hose on it to plug those ports. It's got water all over the floor. Edge of the water. I don't have antifreeze in it yet. We'll see what happens. Should fire right up. I've also got the idle set way up high, just guesstimating 2,000 RPMs. I'll have to check it once it starts. Well, fuel pump's not pumping. I don't have any gas coming up in the float bowl or in the uh, filter bowl. There's a little gas in there, but I put that in there myself. I'll monkey with that and see what happens, but sound okay so far. Well, here's attempt two. I pulled the fuel pump apart, uh, had some had some Teflon tape and get in one of the check valves. Uh, I must have been a little careless with my Teflon tape. I'm sure I'm typically pretty careful on that, but uh, I must have done something wrong because they had a little piece of Teflon tape in the check valve and the fuel pump. Uh, I'm assuming that's why it wasn't pumping. The diaphragms look fine, or the diaphragm, just one. Uh, both check valves seem to be working. So, uh, the rubber soft in it, so it's not like it's dried out and hard. And we'll give it a shot and see what happens this time. Put more fuel in the in the uh, filter bowl. Put more fuel in here. Uh, I did pour fuel down the line going to the pump, so be sure it's got fuel already there. Hopefully, she'll fire up and run this time and stay running. This is why I try to keep all my problems to a minimum. But uh, they still pop up.
Yeah.